It's uh, Martijn van der Veen, Eurovision artist in the Netherlands. Uh, Darun, I was wondering, when I talk about Eurovision this year, everybody says to me, oh wow, it's Darun from Sandstorm. Uh, what made you then take the risk to go to Eurovision? Uh, what risk? Well, uh, maybe in Holland, maybe it's typical Dutch. Uh, that's always a risk when you are famous already uh, and then go to Eurovision, you only have to lose things. Uh, well, okay, yeah, I get it, but um, I don't see it that way at all. Uh, my career has been going on for a little while now and uh, I think I'm only gaining out of this and um, I don't sort of well, I mean, I do think about what other people think, but I, I don't make career choices based on that. Uh, if somebody sees something negative about me taking part in Eurovision or anything else, because I do uh, mostly what I feel like. And uh, getting the team to do this together with Sebo and the singers and everybody was really a no-brainer. Anton Samsonov, OGA e Russia e Sirius. Uh, my question will be about uh, Finnish press selection for your region. Second year in a row, we, you have uh, competition between songs, not between performers. But, Derud, uh, what is the way for you better to uh, compete or with yourself or with another musicians and performers during the press selection? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I haven't done the other way. Um, I could be completely honest. I don't think I would have been able to be here without this kind of invitation. And uh, your question maybe is more towards um, our national broadcast radio than, than me because I'm, I'm very happy to be here and, and only they can sort of uh, answer things about the, the way we select the song. But uh, for me, having a long career, and I think my, my peak as far as hit records come um, was early 2000s, so almost 20 years ago. And I don't think in the national eye, I would have been relevant enough to win the contest. Uh, so I'm just happy that this happened this way, and I'm here. And I'm just being totally honest. Alistair Birch from Eurofile Australia. Darude, you've been to uh, Down Under a couple of times at least. Um, can you tell us what you remember about it? And um, how, how, what can produced or led to the Australian edition of one of your records? Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I've, uh, my, my stuff was released early on, in, well, globally, but uh, through a st uh, central station in, in Australia. And, uh, there were just there was a remix or two that were uh, done by people who were known in Australia, and I think that was basically the reason why we did the, the tour edition separately there, or in addition to the uh, regular record. But uh, outside of that, I've been to Australia since 2001, here and there, love the country, and uh, not just by the way kissing anybody's behind here, but uh, I'm excited to go again. And I'm excited to see the Australian delegation here and uh, pretty much having love with Kate, so. Yes, we got a Danish, Danish flag. Yes. I see a couple of questions. Let's concentrate now. Hello. Uh, the Sebastian, welcome to Tel Aviv. Daniel from Pan Eurovision, I guess, so welcome home. Thank you, Dora. Vakisha, Kipos. And um, we, have, we are uh, broadcasting the, um, the press conferences live right now, and we have a. What? Yes. <laughs> what, uh, wait! Didn't they tell you about your hair? Do you that you need to fix it? No, just kidding. Um, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> just kidding. No, but um, your balance is great. Uh, we have a few uh, questions. I have a question from uh, the audience. Uh, Val Bukovza uh, asks about the um, on the national final. You have this giant revolving LED cube. It seems that you didn't bring it. 
uh, to Tel Aviv. So where did it go? And in general, if you can tell us a bit more about the artistic direction of, uh, of your performance. It's actually still in the customs. <laughs> It's in, in, it's your turn. It's in my bedroom. Um, uh, go ahead, buddy. That's my uh, wardrobe. Um, it's a different kind of stage here. I, I think initially we would have loved to uh, have it here because I think our show at the Uomco, the, the national final, looked so amazing. But. Um, it turned out even better this way, and uh, we're way past thinking whether we'll have a box or not, and uh, this is what we're going to go with. The content and the message is pretty much still the same, and uh, we're just using the stage a little differently now. Pretty happy about that. Touche. Okay. Yes. Hello, Darude and Sebastian Anthony Rosser from WeWeBlogs.com. I have a particular question for Sebastian. Sebastian, you wrote this uh, song based on a holiday in India, seeing all the despair. What is your ultimate goal with this song, um, your vision, uh, you know, presenting it on the Eurovision stage and to the world, Europe and Australia? The ultimate thing is to, what we, do it in semi-final or hopefully in the finals. There will be 100 million, 200 million people watching. And if a fragment of that amount of people starts thinking about global, small, medium issues in their life, and uh, not to look away, because it's always easy, to look at it, go towards it, and try and fix it, make a change, then that's the ultimate outcome. And I would say, if this wasn't an interview that it's going to go on, that should put a required a mic drop right there. Yeah. And tell me, besides that issue, uh, what are the subjects and issues that you would like to write about? <coughs> yeah, like, like uh, what are the, the, the subjects or the issues that you like to write about? Well, I love stories, so this is actually not the typical kind of maybe song I write. I like I like writing love songs, even though I say I can't write a single love song anymore. But uh, is I, it not singing love song anymore? It's in the lyrics of the song. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I can. But I I play love songs and I write love songs. And you love also to hear love songs? Sorry. You love to listen to love Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And, and all kinds of songs. And I love stories, you know. They're like mini books, but put in a five minute, three minute form. So it's uh, music is, is what's always been banging in my heart, even though I was little. I was a big Elvis fan when I was a kid. So, really? so the king kind of got to me. Yeah. We're kind of, I think there's, you know, we're complimenting each other or opposites attract or whatever it is because he's so much of a story guy and there's Bruce Springsteen and, and all that kind of uh, actual stories in songs and real emotion in that way and I'm more of a, uh, not this time around because he's here with me and wrote a story but I'm more of a, I listen to sounds like how the vocal sounds more and sometimes it presents a problem where I mess the vocal or song by uh, word order and stuff as a producer uh, I didn't dare to do it this time around. He's a big guy and a good friend. But, but yeah, so it's, it's interesting how people hear music differently and get different things out of it. And this is, uh, this is the beauty of our song as well, because you can go to a club and go nuts on the dance floor. Hopefully the chord stays in your head a little, a little bit, but you don't have to necessarily. Thank you. Hello, uh, the world is Sebastian, Daniel from Kanye Eurovision again. Um, you are a very famous and known, well-known name outside the Eurovision bubble and with a global audience, not necessarily only the European. Can you tell us about the reactions to the, of the global audience 
from not from Europe and not from the uh, Eurovision uh, participating countries uh, when they heard that you are going to Eurovision? Um, well, I have a good bunch of American fans and, and friends as well who uh, they don't really know too much of Eurovision. Uh, America, no offense to anybody, and I have an American wife, by the way, so not really this, but they are very self-sufficient in some ways. And uh, but when you tell them that this, you know, gets similar viewing numbers as Super Bowl, then they get like, ah, okay, it's probably significant. Um, I, one of the things why I'm here and excited, maybe I can spread the Eurovision bubble a little further, hopefully. And um, I don't know, I've only had um, sort of thumbs up from my fan base because I mean, they would like my stuff anyway, I guess. Okay, yes. Hi, Alistair from Eurofile again. My question is on the Spastin. We've heard that um, Bruce Springsteen is influenced for you, but I've read also that you like Elvis Presley. Is that correct? And can we maybe hear a little bit of your favorite Elvis song? Oh. Yes. Last time you sang here in opera, so... That's true, but this is different. You can't mess with Elvis, you know? He will, he will come back. <laughs> maybe he's not here, you don't know. All right. Well, you said I don't like love songs, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You like me? No, I'm just kidding. Wise men say only fools rush in, for I can help falling in love with you. For I can't help falling in love with you. <laughs> I don't know what happened in the end. I think it was Cartman that took over my body. <laughs> Second uh, question from Russia. Uh, my friend uh, Daria, she is uh, very crazy of your entry of your song, so she is crazy of Finland. But she hates the chorus. Can you describe us why Finnish people like the chorus too much and what is your favorite the chorus suite from Finland? Liquor is a Salmiaki. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yes. That's the, yeah, if we don't call it licorice, yeah, true. I'm sorry. Felt feeling a little dumb right now. Uh, I love Salmiaki. I probably uh, eat too much of it because of the salt and water content, and uh, it's not good for your blood pressure, so. But, uh, I don't know. You have to grow into it, though. So we're talking about Salmiaki right now, right? It's uh, I liked it before. <laughs> I can't do it anymore at all. I, I know where that comes from. We have a liquor with salty licorice, so uh, if you have a little mishap with that, it might turn you off of salt milk. Okay, great. So thank you, guys. So good to have you here. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.